Murphy. Raquel Okie is with us. And uh, Raquel, thank you for coming on the program tonight. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. All right, so you are uh, taking on uh, New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg. We like to call him the uh, the King of Bloombergia. Uh, here on this program, the you say he's the kind of anti-freedom politician that every gun owner should despise. Now, That's what a- makes you say something like that, Raquel? <laughs> well, I, you know, any freedom-loving person, American, should actually despise Michael Bloomberg uh, because he is on a war path um, against freedom. Um, I'm from New York City originally, and right now I'm living up in Ulster County, but New York, uh, but. Michael Bloomberg, the city of New York, I mean, he will try to uh, control everything you do, whether it's your eating, the environment, the, you can't smoke, you can't, uh, oh, the firearms is just incredible. So, so he's the mayor of New York. He actually, uh, you know, forces New Yorkers to take him on another term, even though he had been term limited out because he had, you know, reins on the New York City Council, which, which he, you know, he, he's a, um, he buys people off. You know, he, he's really a scammer. And, and now, or not now, it's something he's been doing since 2006, and it's called Mayors Against Illegal Guns. And mm-hmm. I have, I take offense to the title, uh, because I don't think guns are illegal. And uh, I think that it's a word game, and they use, you know, in other words, you know, as you know, uh, they, they try to blame or, or, or make um, rules for innocent Americans, gun-owning, uh, law-abiding Americans are the ones who get penalized uh, for the kind of um, policies that, you know, mayors against guns and, and people like Michael Bloomberg uh, set, you know, try to put forth, you know, on a federal level. Right. Um, you know, they have, they, it's incredible on their website, you know, they have a complete 57-page um, blueprint. It's called a blueprint for federal action on illegal guns you know i mean i have to i have to take a a, a step back because th- this guy you're a mayor of a city what's your job to your city yeah who are you i know i i know look and, and you know you hit on something that that uh has bothered me since the formation of his anti-gun group you're right what is an illegal gun uh, you know, if, if you wanted to say mayors against illegal possession of firearms, okay. Again, who's going to be against that? Uh, mayors against violent felons with guns? I'm on board with you. Me too. But <laughs> mayors against illegal guns, what he's talking about are guns that are legal that he wants to make illegal. Exactly. That's exactly right. Uh, and, you know. And by calling them, so then, you know, and it's, and it's not just him, it's a, it's a big group of them. They keep calling guns illegal as if it's, um, it goes with the territory, as if guns don't exist without them being illegal. Right. No, it, it, you're exactly right. And, you know, the sad thing is, Raquel, uh, over the years, there have been a number of mayors who have left mayors against illegal guns because they joined based on a, you know, an innocuous letter that, uh, that they get from Mayor Bloomberg. I mean, imagine you are the mayor of some small town. And all of a sudden, the mayor of New York's writing you and asking for your help uh, in joining a nationwide coalition that isn't anti-Second Amendment. Uh, It's just designed to, you know, uh, enforce a couple of reasonable regulations to keep guns out of the hands of criminals. You know, there are a lot of mayors who were were suckered into this thing, and all of a sudden they saw their name in a big full-page ad uh, in the New York Times or USA Today calling on Congress to pass more gun control legislation, and that was the first they, they knew... Well, the real agenda was now you could I, I can I can tell these mayors, you know, uh, you got to read the fine print. You got to investigate these uh, organizations that want you to be a member. Uh, but, you know, again, there have been a lot of, of, of mayors who felt like they were deceived into joining Bloomberg's group. Well, I hope they get out of it and they probably should say something publicly because it's it's just anti um, it's anti constitution. And it's also just really anti-freedom and it just he has no business you know I, I don't understand how he thinks he can come from new york city and go to any town in in america and dictate uh, what's illegal and what's not 
you know, he's not the, he, he, and the other thing is that he has aspirations for president. So the, the whole country has to keep their eyes out on him. Yeah. Because he tries to portray himself like an independent, but he's not. Oh, no. He, yeah. No, not, not at all. Now, listen, I, you know, he has been hinting for, uh, at least going back to 2004, uh, you know, that, that he would like to be president, uh, and he's flirted with the idea of a third-party run. I think a lot of the mayors against illegal gun stuff is to raise his profile around the, the rest of the country. I think he wants to be seen as America's gun control czar. Frankly, I think he wants to be seen as America's mayor. Uh, but you know what? We don't have America's mayor. He is the mayor of New York City. Exactly. He needs to be doing his job in New York City. Uh, and, 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 you know, frankly, I mean, he was elected with a bare minimum, I think, 51 percent of the vote last time around. Most expensive mayoral campaign in U.S. history. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's spending more and more money to get fewer and fewer votes. And I think it's because the people who know him best are getting kind of tired and sick of the shtick. Yeah, they are. Well, unfortunately, uh, he is still, you know, trying to impose his will on the rest of us. Uh, you know, you get into a couple of items that Mayors Against Illegal Guns has been uh, instrumental in, in, in fighting, including uh, the TRD amendments. And this, I got to say, this is one of those things that sets me off, Raquel, because among those calling for the TRD amendments a decade ago was the commissioner of the New York Police Department, Ray Kelly, who said, we need these amendments. We need to keep ATF trace data uh, uh, as a law enforcement tool. It should not be subject to uh, open records requests. And the uh, uh, Congressman Todd T. Hart from Kansas made sure that ATF trace data could only be used in the context and course of a criminal investigation. If a cop wants to request this, uh, this trace data, they can. If a prosecutor wants to request it, they can. A if a Chicago uh, uh, mayor or a New York mayor wants to request it, nope. They cannot. They cannot. Exactly, and that's normal. Absolutely, and yet you've got Bloomberg who has waged this multi-year campaign uh, to put ATF trace data yeah. back into the public domain where where he could, uh, uh, you know, get access to it and try to use it in uh, lawsuits you know against why? gun dealers. Because they, they, they want to use it in, a, in lawsuits yeah, yeah, absolutely. against the manufacturers of guns. Right. Uh, that's, the, that's their purpose. You just follow the money. Yeah. Even though the ATF says, now you can't use the information that way. We're not, we're not. We're not putting the information together in a, in a way that, you know, you could use it to uh, uh, to try to go after uh, firearm uh, retailers or gun store owners because not every gun that's used in a crime is traced. Not every gun that's traced is used in a crime. Uh, simply, a, a, you know, a, a trace is not proof of uh, any sort of criminal wrongdoing. It still doesn't give them the right to give to disclose that information to anyone other than, you know, a local authority. Yeah. Right. I know. Well, listen, Raquel, I'm glad that... Uh, uh, before I go, can, yeah. I, can I say something about the Tea Party? Sure. Because I, I've been listening to the program, and I and I heard a lot. I heard you talk about it, and I heard you talk You're about it. You're not going to call them terrorists, are you? Oh, gosh. Absolutely not. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> you, know, you know what I want to tell you? I started a Tea Party up here in Ulster County um, a, a, over a year ago, and I started with eight people in a diner. And I started the group on meetup.com, and I said, do you guys want to get together and talk about local politics? And, that, and from there, what we have um, put together is every single month we have what, we, what, what is a speaker's meeting, and we invite guests, whether they be like local officials, we have candidates, you know, we have candidates, um, you know, uh, U.S. Senate from last year, uh, we have... Um, the local candidates, the legislators coming in this year. Um, plus, we have, you know, writers and just, you know, people of note, people in the area, people that uh, know things about politics and can teach us something. Mm -hmm. So now we, we, have, we meet every month. We, we probably get about anywhere between 15 and 35 people a month. You know, it just depends on the weather and stuff. We're, we're in a little town. We do so much work, you know. We, we say the Pledge of Allegiance. We, 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 we sit there for two and a half hours. We listen. We eat. We have a couple of drinks. We have a great time. We talk about God. We, we had our meeting at Ron and Gun Club. You know, we... It's a wonder. It's a nice place. It's not a Republican, Democrat, Independent, Independence Party place. It's an American place, and and we are exercising our First Amendment rights. And I am very offended because I wake up this morning and I think, oh my goodness, all of these people are calling me a terrorist. 
I'm the founder and organizer of Ulster Orange Tea Party. That means they're calling me a terrorist. How dare they? How dare they that they never set foot at one of my tea parties? You understand? Yeah. So I'm completely offended, and I want to tell your listeners that, um, you know, do me a favor. You know, look, people are crazy. People bring their nuttiness to the tea party. They bring them to political parties. They bring them to everything. You know, we, you can't do anything about that. You know, that's normal. That's life. But, but the pr- predominant people that come to our, my, to our meetings are real uh, smart. They want, to, they want to know what's going on. They're fed up. They, their taxes are going up. They can't afford to live in New York State. They're pissed off. And, and that's why they're showing up. That's why they're getting off their couch, because they want to know what they can do to change. This. And, and that's <laughs> why and that's why the opponents Raquel, I'm sorry, the music means yeah. we're almost out of time, but that's yeah. why the opponents are so freaked out by yeah. the Tea Party. So you keep doing what you're doing. I'm glad you could join us on the program and uh, let's have you back on again soon, okay? Sure. Thank you. That's uh, great. All right, you have a great night, Raquel. Raquel Okie joining us from uh, Human Events.